replaced by its predecessor, the 1 Series, and stretched a little longer and wider, and a new market strategy of making all sedans odd numbers and all coupes even numbers, BMW thinks it's got a competitive contender in the entry-level luxury segment. So is this new entry-level luxury coupe competitive enough to compete against other entry-level contenders, including the Mercedes CLA and the Audi A3? Let's go ahead and find out. Now the 2 Series looks like many other BMWs of course and it's pretty easy to spot this car as a BMW on the road. Of course you got the Kinney grille design and the famous but trendy LED halos which are available but this one doesn't have it. And it can easily be spotted as a BMW. You do have remote keyless entry of course. Your lock, unlock and to release the trunk. Now this one I have right here is a 220AI with the 2 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder. I really do like these rims, they're 17 inch alloy wheels, they look pretty good in my opinion. It is a mineral gray metallic exterior with smart key access on the driver and passenger door. With the black leather interior. Power driver's seat, power recline, and power lumbar, of course. And memory seat settings for two people. Now, stepping into the interior of the 2 Series, you will notice how it is very BMW familiar in here. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. You do have push button ignition, which comes with the uh, smart key access system. Just put your foot on the brake, hit the button to start, of course. You have a three-spoke leather-wrapped steering wheel. Very nice grip to it. I love the feel of this steering wheel. You also do have an eight-speed automatic transmission, down for drive up for reverse, push for part. I'm actually quite surprised you do not have a rear view camera. By this day and age, I feel like they should offer that standard. Let's go ahead and turn on the headlights. You also do have your fog lights as well. And the hazards. Automatic driver's side window. Let's go ahead and pop the hood, check out the engine bay. Heated exterior mirrors with LED turn signal indicators integrated onto the mirrors. You do have your halogen headlights with your fog lights. Of course you have that corporate Kinney grill design, very BMW familiar here. And like I said, LED daytime running lights are optional. However, at this price point, I feel like they should at least put projectors. This is almost nearly a $40,000 car and it doesn't even have projectors. Now under the hood you will find BMW's 2 liter inline turbo 4 cylinder engine. Now BMW uses this motor in many of their vehicles including the 3 series, um, the 4 series as well. Now this motor actually produces a pretty good uh, amount of horses. We have 240 horses here and it's extremely fuel efficient earning a EPA estimated 23 city, 36 highway. Extremely, extremely fuel efficient uh, for that kind of power.
Now the 2 Series main competitors is the Mercedes-Benz CLA class as well as the Audi A3. Now the BMW 2 Series is the only one offered in a coupe body style. There's no sedan offered for the 2 Series. If you want a sedan, just step up to a 3 Series. Um, but the Mercedes-Benz CLA and Audi A3, even though they are offered in sedan forms, their back seats are nearly useless. Very, very cramped back seats back there in the A3 and the CLA. Now, total vehicle price for this particular 2 Series is $38,625. Now, coming to the rear fascia, it does look like the previous generation, the 1 Series. The only thing that's pretty much changed is the taillights, to be honest. But you do have a rear window defroster back here, and an LED third brake light, and a pretty nice looking shark fin antenna. <laughs> And some nice rear reflectors. And some nice dual exhaust. You do have your power windows, your power mirrors, and in typical BMW fashion, you do have your power door locks located up by the air vents. And of course, everything is well put together. It's very solid. And you do have set and silver door handles. Now let's go ahead and hear how that two liter turbo sounds. Very nice. Great sounding 2 liter. Now, as you come to expect, material and build quality and fit and finish is superb out of the BMW, but that's expected when you buy this luxury car. Um, of course, everything's soft to the touch up here. Everything is soft to the touch, but I have noticed um, a little few low grade interior plastics. Um, that's not typical BMW, especially right here. Um, it's very hard plastic right here, hard plastic finish right here. Um, that's not really typical BMW right there. Um, the headliner is nicely finished, nice and plush as well. Um, the interior, like I said, it's very BMW familiar in here. Um, as far as other models, you won't, you won't really find anything really different with their interiors. Um, it's just very everything in their interiors across all their models pretty much look the same unless if you go up to a 5 series or 7 series but as far as the 4 series and the 3 series goes um, they look pretty much very very similar um, you have your cruise control buttons right here your uh, steering wheel mounted audio controls voice recognition Bluetooth of course um, to be honest, I'm ready for a change up in the interior. It's just getting kind of old. Um, it's been what I've been seeing for at least the past five years. Um, you have your presets right here. Your dual zone automatic climate control, of course. Fan speeds and your zones. Heated seats and your rear window defroster buttons are located up here. And then your center console, auxiliary input, USB port, nice and soft to the touch, of course, nicely padded as well. And I'm not going to talk too much about the iDrive, but um, if you want to know more about the iDrive, look on my infotainment review of the iDrive. However, I will say that it's very ergonomically correct and it's very, very easy to use. It's definitely way more improved than how it used to be. Um, but basically everything on your infotainment and your radio and uh, to access your media sources, it's all controlled by this 
dial right here and your iDrive controller right here. And a navigation system is optional, of course, will, which will get you a bigger screen and stuff. And then you have your vehicle info settings. Pretty typical iDrive stuff here. And you do have an auto dimming rear view mirror. SOS safety connect, interior illumination. Your sunroof, of course. Your controls. And your sunshade. Now, as far as the instrument panel and the gauges go, um, it's very, very BMW familiar here again. Uh, these gauges, they're just not doing it for me. They're very boring. I, I would love to see a TFT display or something like that just to make it more high-end tech. And you do have a sport mode and an eco mode and you can turn the traction control off. Now as far as the ride and handling go in the 2 Series, this is where it really shines of course, it's the ultimate driving machine. Um, it handles very, very well around corners and it has a very compliant ride too as well. Uh, what you hear about the 3 Series um, not being as fun to drive as it used to be, um, the 2 Series is very fun to drive compared to the Mercedes CLA or the Audi A3. This is definitely more of the driver focused car of the bunch. And as far as visibility goes at the 2 Series, um, it's pretty good, I have to say. I really think the visibility is pretty good. I have to say, this is very nicely padded. Now, as far as the seats go in the 2 Series, very, very comfortable, very supportive as well. Um, there's not as much uh, side bolstering that I would love to have, but the seats are pretty much for the most part very comfortable. Now you do have BMW's automatic uh, start-stop system so when you come to a complete stop the engine will shut down to save fuel. Um, thank God you do have the option of turning it off because it can get in the way um, of everyday driving kind of. It's pretty intrusive and it's very noticeable at times. You also do have a manual tilt and telescoping steering wheel as well. Nice range of adjustment, I have to say. Now, like I said, to pop the trunk, you could do it from the key, of course, or you could press the button right here. Now back here, you will find a pretty smallish trunk. It is a coupe, so not buying it for utility, of course. Now, I love the way you can get into the 2 Series. You can uh, push this button right here, which helps out a lot. And then you can push this up forward. And it helps a lot when getting inside the 2 Series. Now, back here, it is very, very cramped. Um, like I said, this is a coupe, and it's a very, very small coupe. And you do have rear seat air vents, of course, and a power outlet. And dual map, box, map pockets back here. And pretty soft to the touch uh, armrest and nice and soft to the touch up here as well as up here. And build quality does flow through in the rear, so it's very good. Now if you're looking for the most rear seat space out of its competitors, now if you're looking for the most rear seat space, um, the Audi A3 offers the most rear seat space, however, um, it's not that much. It's just very, very cramped back there too. However, the 2 Series is one of the 
most cramped as far as rear seat space goes, but it is a coupe. I feel like they should have made the Audi A3 and the CLA a coupe. You do have a power passenger seat with power lumbar and power recline. Now coming to the glove box, it's nice and damp and lined with felt, very nice, typical BMW fashion. Alright, now the 2 Series might not be the most fancied up contender in the entry level luxury segment. However, it's well-rounded nature of fuel efficient and powerful powertrains and exceptional handling make it a solid choice in the entry level luxury segment. Remember that this is Cameron Birch from Cameron's Car Reviews.